Choosing your own direction means choosing how to live your dreams. New home, new car, home improvement? Whether you're a first-time borrower or have established credit, Directions Credit Union can help you finance those dreams with flexible loan options and competitive rates. With technology that makes it easy to apply online and our knowledgeable staff ready to assist when needed, it's time to make your dreams a reality. It's easy to choose your own direction. Become a member today at DirectionsCU.org. Directions Credit Union. Very libertarian savior. I'd be like, listen, if people are going to get damned, they're going to get damned. You know, sort of bootstrap themselves into salvation. How about that? Yeah? There have actually been studies that find when you don't help people save themselves, they save themselves. Yeah. yeah. That's what I've... I would let the poor starve. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where every week we sample another selection from Christian cinema in an effort to prove that men could handle something as painful as childbirth. Sitting to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you, sir. And sitting 989 miles to my right is my other good friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, good of you to join us, sir. Oh, I'm glad to be here. So tell us, Heath, what are we breaking down this week? We've got Left Behind World at War. Ooh. It is the exciting conclusion to a three-part cautionary tale about the perils of international diplomacy and world peace. <laughs> quick uh, quick recap to get everyone up to speed. The rapture happened, uh -huh. and the bad guy in this post-rapture scenario is the UN Secretary General who's trying to end world hunger, and get rid of nuclear weapons. Boo, and, boo. <laughs> right. Yay, hunger, boo. The, Not uh, hunger. The, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the good guys are an underground Christian rebel faction of domestic terrorists. And go. Yep, that's, yeah, nailed it. Now, before we really get started with the breakdown, I think we have to talk about the big change in the franchise between number two and number three, and that was, of course, the addition of Academy Award-winning actor who obviously didn't invest wisely in the 80s, Lou Gossett Jr. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't buy silver. <laughs> right. Who plays the embattled post-apocalyptic U.S. president. So before we even get started, what do you guys think of uh, of Lou's performance here? Uh, well, I thought it was a great job by the casting directors. He's, he's like a black Morgan Freeman. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, what I love that about Lou is that they – it seemed to me that they – not only was Lou fantastic, but it seemed to me that they used Lou to cover up for the fact that they switched the other black guy. Right. So that they were like, oh, guys, we switched black guys. That's super racist and offensive. What are you talking about? We got a whole new black guy. How could we be racist? We got a whole – we added another black guy. We made him the president as ridiculous exactly. as that racist is. racist anymore. It's a question of the math. So it, now I, I do have to say though everybody else's shitty acting really kind of stood out next to Lou <laughs> that it, it certainly didn't make it better. So okay, now we've seen the whole trilogy. How do you guys rank the three movies? Well, this third one had an actor, like you just said, yep. like a mm -hmm. working actor from like the two-hour movie business. So <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say three, two, one, reverse order is how I enjoyed them. All oh, right, and, and Eli, I I would go one, three, and two. So one being the best because it has the Knights Who Say Knee <laughs> and Forehead Girl, who it turns out we just never have to talk about again. Three, because you get Force Powers and Lou Gossett Jr., of course, right, and then obviously. the switched black guy. And then two, because nothing happened. Nothing happened yeah. in that entire <laughs> film. I, I definitely I, – I, I'm going to split the difference between the two of you guys, and I, I definitely agree that two was the worst. But I'm going to say this one was the was the best. I had – way more fun with this one than I did with the other two. But I think it's it's also worth pointing out that am, among a list of any three venereal diseases, one is the least bad. So you know, I don't want to <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Leave if it doesn't with start with an H, you just get a shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know what we're talking about. Come on. So, Heath, tell me, how bad was this movie? Well, you know, it was, it was like you were describing there. It's it's like a like a pleasant venereal disease, you know? It's like It's your third time around, so you know what to expect. And, <laughs> You know, and this time there's an attractive older black man heavily involved. So, yeah, right, well, exactly. 
You've got a relationship with the nurses. They're like, come on now, seriously, (laughs) wrap it or tap it. And you're like, I know, I know. I gave it to her and then she gave it back to me. It's it's, it's kind of a thing now. It's kind of a thing. I don't know. (laughs) And Eli, how would you assess the overall cinematic experience here? Well, this one actually was incredibly enjoyable because – It was like all of the boring, terrible characters from the first two movies got transported to a real action movie, but because they're boring and terrible, they couldn't do anything. They weren't any use. It's like they just got put into a diehard movie, and it was like, you got to climb across the broken glass and get to the – I'm just going to sit here and pray. (laughs) I didn't – maybe the – Maybe someone else could do that. Gained a lot of weight since we the didn't... first one. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> ideal for this I stunt. Sh- I, I, today's a cheat day. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, I had that feeling the entire time in this movie that it was like a crossover film between a real movie and the first two left behind <laughs> flicks. And and here's a little evidence to back all that up, by the way. This is we're talking about the third film in a trilogy that's based on a best selling book series and they'd added an Oscar winning actor as the lead. And still the producers had to open this fucking movie in churches <laughs> instead of theaters. By the way, it was the last 50 pages of book two of a 16 book series. Yes. That's yeah, how they apparently. zeroed in on the uh, content for this one. It's also worth noting, by the way, that the first trailer for this movie was released in 2002, more than three years before the movie itself was released. I'm guessing that had something to do with Lou's lawyer losing a long battle after seeing the finished product. I can't verify that, <laughs> though. Exactly. Uh, Finally, he hung himself in his office, and they were like, great, release date next <laughs> November. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the sooner we get through this, the sooner I'm on to non-Kirk Cameron movies. So we're going to take a quick break to gather our gumption, and when we come back, we're going to discuss the, all the enigmatic script vomit that is left behind World at War. Hi, Arnold. Arnold Pinnock, come on in. Love your work in Cypher, man. Really, really good stuff. Thanks, man. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Great. So you're going to be reading for the part of Bruce. Okay. Now, wait. Bruce, isn't that the part played by Clarence Gilliard? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, he's, not, he's not able to make this project. I guess he's got, um, like, bookshelf cancer. So I don't know. He wasn't super clear about it. I, I, I see. Is anybody else changing? Uh, I mean, no. I, <laughs> I don't think people would be able to follow the story if we, like, replaced Kirk Cameron. You know what I'm saying? I see. So they won't notice this one because... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, listen, let me give you an example. Steve, can, can you come in here for a minute? Uh, yeah, hey man, what's up? Um, oh wow, Clarence, Clarence Gilliard Jr., awesome to meet you. This is... That, that, this great. Is Thanks so much, Steve. That'll be all. Wow. Yeah, you want to see something worse? Check this out. Hey, Steve, come back in here for a second? Yeah? Oh wow, Morgan Freeman! You are amazing. You are awesome in oh, all those. Come on, that's just talk. not object permanence. There, S- Steve. Steve, close your eyes. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mr. Friedman. Okay, great. And open them. O.J. Simpson. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna start shooting back. in November. That work for you? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it does. Look, it's Oprah. And we're back for the breakdown, and the very first thing this movie wants everybody to know is that it has Lou Gossett Jr. in it. <laughs> and also, he's no Morgan Freeman, based on the voiceover. Yeah, it's like if Morgan Freeman was giving a voiceover, but he was doing it for four different documentaries, so he lost his train of thought that day. It was like, <laughs> the penguins march on to the bullet time. Laura Croft knew I'm God and Bruce <laughs> Almighty Batman. I've got a machine here that makes makes the penguins oh god i shouldn't have taken that ass <laughs> and just to give everybody an idea of the backdrop of this thing we are in the white house and it has been explodinated so like <laughs> shit has really hit the fan here. yeah I, I just had a question about the uh choice on the set for this uh oval office spot why is there a picnic table a really old picnic table in the oval office it's flipped over now and it's just leaning there against his <laughs> Listen, desk too we all know what a, the first thing a black guy would do if he became oh, president God. set up a picnic table with some watermelon am i right who's with me just me let's just oh i'm a vicious racist early. okay <laughs> And, of course, now we're going to get back to all of that because the movie takes us back in time to one week earlier when apparently a bunch of trucks were driving down a road. (laughs) Right, exactly. And this is – now, listen, I'm going to do something for the people listening to this podcast, which the movie did not fucking do for us, which is these are the Christian Christian underground – 
missionaries who are one of the two sets of good guys in this movie. There are two sets of good guys in this movie. There is a militia that is not Christian, mm-hmm. and then there's the Christians, which include Chloe and Kirk Cameron and Blade Stick Vanderbilt. And wouldn't um, it be nice if the movie had made any effort to, like, let you in on that rather than oh, just, Oh, you want to like, know who people are in this movie? Go fuck yourself. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Look it up, bitch. <laughs> so what is happening is these trucks are driving into what appears to be a military compound to steal something mm-hmm. when they are discovered by police. And I just want to point out the first moment of this where the cop car pulls up. A cop car pulls up that could not look less like a cop car. They could have <laughs> just had a guy walk up with a cardboard box that had cop car written on the side and it would have been better. It's gre- It's bright green. It has no sirens and it has like police spelled wrong with an S on the edge. <laughs> it's a fucking... It's just like, hey, if you want to know what kind of quality you're going to get from this movie, this is what we think cop cars look like. <laughs> and, uh, I wrote down, it's the bad guys from The Rock, except they're not stealing missiles this time. What what are they taking? And then it gets answered for me. We've got to get these Bibles out of here. <laughs> they're Which stealing during an action Bibles. sequence. Yes. Asked and answered. Yes. So, yeah, this they're is a breaking into a military movie. base to steal Bibles. That's what happened. Right, because the Bibles have been confiscated? <laughs> <laughs> yes, All of they them. Also, they get caught by the cops, and then Chris, Chris from movie two, mm-hmm. remember Chris, the god of Down syndrome? The guy who well, he's there, the and he gets <laughs> shot instantly. Well, and the cops go, you're under arrest, blam, 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 sh- and, and you're also dead. Yeah, they use the black guy method of arrest in that game. They use the Ferguson <laughs> handbook for arrest there. You're under pep, 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 arrest. Oh, wait, no, he's saying... Or if that's on me. That is on me. I'll take three three weeks of paid leave. It's on me. I deserve it. So, so the um, so the the cop after they shoot him in the back, they they pull off his mask, and yes, it's Homo Chrissyi, and they say, "Who do you work for?" And he says, "I work for God Almighty." Son of just in man. case the stealing Bibles back thing wasn't heavy handed enough. And one one of the things that I love about that is. The, the cop reacts to his response of, I work for God, the way I did. Yeah. We both were like, oh, <laughs> yeah, shoot him in the head. <laughs> shoot, him, shoot him in the face. <laughs> shoot him in his thick, thick face. <laughs> Which, by the way, just a side note about when they shoot him. This is something I have not seen in any other movie ever. Usually they shoot him and it's just a blackout or they shoot him and there's like a noise. They shoot him and little flecks of bone and blood come <laughs> flying up into the screen <laughs> well actually that was just a clever dissolve into the next scene, segue you see. Into yeah, a ski oh, what situation. you're actually yeah. seeing is the president shooting clay pigeons but they, they they push it together so much that it looks like a brain exploding it's oh i thought that was his <laughs> head i thought that was just like going really hardcore into Chris's... oh yeah his nose got all over me come on man <laughs> Stand up and shoot down. <laughs> that would have been <laughs> such a resting point. Gross. <laughs> Gross, Brian. Are you going to be mad the whole drive home? Yeah, I'm going to be mad the whole drive home. You got a guy's face on me. <laughs> so then we cut to the aforementioned uh, clay pigeon shooting scene. And I should mention that this this scene was shot uh, like at, at, like about a year before scenes with vice presidents shooting things got really fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I read, oh, good. Dick Cheney's in the movie, yeah. and he's firing rifles with the president. What could possibly go wrong? Right. Yeah, he's going shooting with the guy from Whiplash. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then, so they're sitting there talking together. The first thing he says to him is, "Look, you're my vice president and my best friend," which I think is a very <laughs> weird line for the president to say in this movie. You're my vice president and my best friend. I don't think Obama's ever said that to Biden. Just been like, Joe, I want you to know that not just that, but we're BFFs. <laughs> Go on, put on the bracelet, Joe. <laughs> and, and beyond that, I mean, like, wouldn't you think that the Veep would know those two pieces of information? I mean, who is he telling that to? <laughs> he just announces it every 40 seconds. <laughs> right. Whatever relationship he has with the person. You're my wife and also my wife. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. <laughs> Still my wife. All right, going shopping. <laughs> so basically, the vice president has t- chosen this moment, not right away, but has chosen this month moment, apparently years after finding out Nikolai's plan, to tell him that Nikolai, who is the Antichrist and the Secretary General of the UN and now the President of the World? Yes, uh-huh. 
yeah. and the head of the world's religion. Yep, that too. Who yeah. the fuck knows? <laughs> is planning to attack America. And uh, this conversation continues, but the movie moves on for some reason. So we continue to have the exact same conversation, but now we're in a motorcade. Right. This is where the pre- the vice president is updating him on. Uh, he says, well, what did we find out from their transmissions? He goes, they were coded, so we don't know what they said. But they're biological formulas. They're developing a biological agent, and they're planning to nuke us. It's like, wow, what didn't you get out of that? Right. <laughs> well, we don't know what they ordered for lunch. You know, Grubhub, <laughs> Grubhub was really good in coding. So, what? like, <laughs> could have had a sandwich or a salad. I have no idea. I can't tell you, Mr. President. And just as he's warning him that the president is one of the prime targets, they start to explode from apparently underneath. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All of the cards, and which the president, they, they are very clearly exploding either from the inside or underneath, and yet the president tells his driver, hurry up, let's outrun him. You cannot outrun a car that is blowing up from the inside. <laughs> I assumed... That these cars had all been equipped with car bombs, which made his instruction really confusing. But then when they get out of the car, it, it's apparently not that because someone shoots an RPG yes. at the president. <laughs> right, which apparently they only had enough money to do that once, so they had to blow the other cars from uh, up from inside. By the way, apparently his driver was in on this because, like, yeah. the, the driver runs off and leaves the president by himself. So, like... I'm thinking, okay, if the president's driver is in on the assassination attempt, do we really need to blow anything up? Guys, we could just have D- Dan turn around. <laughs> just just turn around. That's all that's required of Dan is to turn around and, and fire a gun at the president. You guys know bullets work. We don't have to blow them up. I said I wanted to blow them up. Okay, okay, we'll blow them up. We'll blow them up. But we've only got one RPG. Everyone else gets a car bomb. That's fine. That's fine. I just, I like the idea of like a stinger missile. Make sure there's some people on <laughs> snowmobiles nearby because that'll look awesome. Right, exactly. Someone watched a Bond movie and they were like, snowmobiles, got it. Do you not want to watch the scene? Nope. I know that snowmobiles mean action movie. Good. Back to Even prayer. Even if there's no goddamn reason for them to be there. So now, yeah, we've got explosions. We've got RPGs. We've got guys on motorcycles. We've got uh, machine guns going off. We've got fucking snowmobiles. Full-blown action flick with nothing happening exactly. Just all of these elements being brought together. Including a woman on a motorcycle who seems to kill about 15 Contra bad guys with the spreader gun all at once. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, exactly. She drives up. By the way, we have no idea who this character is. I'm going to help you who's listening to the podcast now and tell you she's a member of the militia who we're going to meet in about 40 minutes. And yeah, she shoots everyone down like it's Duke Nukem 3D. She's just like, <laughs> and everyone's just like, arr, arr. just yeah. dies very conveniently. In a line. (laughs) It was nice of him to line up for her like that. And then she says some enigmatic shit to the president about how the vice president was a good man. Not good enough for us to show up before he got murdered, uh, apparently, because he got blown up in the limo. But he was a good man. That's right. Okay, so we've gone from explosions and snowmobiles and machine guns and all of these RPGs and shit to... Probably the most boring thing that you could possibly go to next. We start off in this blown-up church uh, where apparently... All the characters from the first two movies are getting married, one of them to a character that we've never met before. Never met, but looks physically identical to a character from the first two movies who she is not. Yes, exactly, exactly. (laughs) And is marrying the love interest of the person that that character was the love interest for in the first two movies, too. Yeah. And if you've just stopped and thought to yourself, hey, guys, that's really confusing. Can't you make this clearer? No, No. we fucking can't because this movie is insane. I can't explain to you the book that Nietzsche wrote about how trains are going to come get you. And I can't explain this fucking movie. All right. It's not a lack of information. It's just a crazy piece of shit. Right, and it's such a piece of shit that the, that someone actually thought that the right idea following this action sequence where the vice president gets killed and the president almost gets assassinated is seven minutes of vows. Right, we have yeah. two couples getting married, and we actually sit through all four vows. Yes, and also, it's very important to realize, we'll get to the vows in a second— they replaced the black character with a different black character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every single character in this movie is the same except for the black guy. Yeah. Who they just got a different black guy for, use the name, and never acknowledge. No one's like, hey, Bruce, your face changed. Nope. It's just – they just assumed that no one in their audience would notice. They'd just be like, is that – 
he must have lost weight. Anyways, Jesus. <laughs> so they've got it. That's how offensive and terrible this movie is, is that everyone else has stayed except for the original actor whose name I don't remember. Clarence, Clarence Gilliard, Gilliard Jr. Jr. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't yeah, book him this time. Darren, they couldn't yes. book him. Yeah, exactly. Couldn't get Clarence th- this time, <laughs> but they just got a different black guy. And move forward from there. Well, no, I, I actually checked on that because that struck me as so odd because you're like, okay, like this is Clarence Gilliard Jr. It's not exactly a hard get. Um, and uh, according to the IMDb page for this movie, they said there was a scheduling conflict, but I looked at his IMDb page and he did absolutely nothing, no films between the release of the last Left Behind movie and 2012. There was like a, a 10 year <laughs> gap. In his uh, in his acting career that coincided his with scheduling his movie, conflict so. was screaming in his room because he finally got around to watching the movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in two thousand and three, he was like, you know what, I gotta watch those Left Behind movies, and then he screamed until two thousand and eleven. And then when he was he was in a mental hospital until 2012, he was like, all right, ready to be in movies again. Let me see the fucking script. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like he had a scheduling conflict the way. I do when I, you know, we have like terrible friends who always want to have us over for dinner. They're like, oh my God, we need to get together. It's like, oh, I would, but Anna has AIDS. (laughs) She's got it so bad. Yeah, she's got cancer in her, in her wall socket (laughs) picture frame bookcase. Oh yeah, big old picture frame bookcase. Are you just saying things you see? No. What? I love you guys. I'm just so umbrella stand. Oh. And by the way, why did they choose? Okay, so this movie can't decide exactly how dystopian it is because sometimes in the movie, like everything's bombed out and exploding and burning and stuff, and sometimes they're just in a city. So why did they choose to get married in Mordor? <laughs> it, it makes no fucking sense. Because all movie. the churches have been bombed out. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, all right. Yeah, the churches. I think we're supposed to believe that the churches and places of prayer and good government have been destroyed. But Nikola Tesla, or whatever his name is, <laughs> has a, like a nice office building with elevators yeah. and security exactly. and shit like that. Exactly. No one was like, hey, Nikolai, why is, why are these all these blown up churches? Like, why haven't we turned those into something? I, no, no, no. Just leave them. <laughs> leave them there. And make sure they're still burning. You know? Yes. Yeah. Like, did this just happen yesterday, or do they just go and set new fires every couple days? Right. Exactly. Hey, fire guys, we're here to just keep making. How are your fires? They're still burning. Okay. All right. Just checking. Just checking. Just doing my job. All right. No need to take that. Out. It's like when the con ed guy comes to check the meter. You're right. like, ugh. <laughs> Listen, I gotta light your sofa back on fire, man. This is not my decision. <laughs> All right, so just for the record, the characters that are getting married here are uh, Kurt Cameron, I mean, Buck Williams, Chloe, who seems to have trimmed down nicely and looks completely yeah, different. Yeah, Chloe did great. Chloe did some uh, P90X in between yeah, these two Yeah, yeah, clearly. Also, Ray Blade, Mountain Puncher, and this new character, Amanda or Mandy. Let's let's make sure that the character has a name and a nickname that we use interchangeably and also looks like Two other characters in this fucking movie. Like, they ugh, God, they expected me to keep track of a lot of middle-aged blonde chicks in this movie. So here's how I did it. I did good Ann Coulter, and then the flight stewardess <laughs> is bad Ann Coulter. Because they both look exactly like Ann Coulter. So there's good Ann Coulter and bad Ann Coulter. <laughs> but, but no, but there's a third blonde that you have to throw in there who I think of as good Gwyneth Paltrow. But yeah, we'll get to her in a minute. <laughs> um, and I, I just wanted to point out that uh, Mandy, who is, I guess, good Ann Coulter... Yeah. Calls her husband captain in her vows. Which is so weird. Right. So there are many weird things in the vows. Chloe says, I will comfort you with my body in her vows, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I threw up in my mouth. I threw up in my mouth. I was just like, I'll comfort you in my I was like, oh, no. That's no, you know, if anyone ever says they're going to comfort you with their body and you're not about to cut them open and use them for warmth like a tauntaun, it's not going to go well. It's the only comfort with someone's body you want. And then, of course, since nobody fucks anybody in Christian movies, after their wedding, they all sit down for Chinese food, I guess. (laughs) So the next scene is all of them having lunch and discussing exposition. Right, exactly. They're discussing exposition. They're reminding you, if you didn't watch this episode two or the second movie, that Rayford Steelstort 
Uh, Captain, sorry, Captain yes. Rainford Steam. His wife's <laughs> gonna say that in his vows. I should probably say it too. Um, Captain Steelblade Nick Nar, um, is the pilot for the Antichrist. Yes. And he does that because he's keeping an eye on him or something. Yeah, who knows? He did something in the second movie. If you're wondering if he does anything about it in the third movie, oh no, he does not. No. <laughs> Nothing at all. So now, yeah, like, so he gets this uh, mysterious, t- page text thing that it says he's got to run off very quickly and as they'll do over and over again in this movie they say oh you're in a hurry well let's stop and pray first <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly this movie treats pray stopping and praying the way normal action movies treat like here take this gun with just one bullet right. like that they're going to use later on it's like wait the gun with just one bullet Pick-ow! except they're just like wait 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 stop and imagine for a second <laughs> Okay, good, good. Now you thought in your head. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, I thought something must have gone wrong here. Kirk Cameron definitely derailed this scene a little bit. They're like, all right, let's let's pray together. And Pastor's like, all right, as I walk through the valley of the shed, and they have to stop. Kirk, you're uh, you're grunting the prayer along with me. It's just supposed <laughs> to be me talking, and you're literally you're, you're grunting the prayer out loud. And <laughs> all right, all right, I'm gonna do it again. All right, you're still mouthing it though. You're still you're still now you're tapping rhythmically on, on the table. This is a movie. We're still rolling. No, nope, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> is it just me or can am I the only one that cannot hear about God's rod and staff without giggling? <laughs> I can't hear about it without jerking off. Well, that too. Um, all right, so then now we get back to the president because let's face it, who gives a shit about Kirk and his buddies? I mean, you know, there's a fucking dead vice president, and we're wasting time on these guys having Chinese food post wedding. And I just want to point out a couple of things. First of all, Nikolai is in a skyscraper there, which he uses to rule the world from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the the universal, like, ruler logo is terrible graphic design. That's the first thing I want. It's just like half a globe <laughs> with some letters and an arrow or a sword. Well, Who it's, knows? It's kind of – it's obviously like a kind of a take on the UN symbol, but, you know, because the people who made this movie think the UN is evil – but so we we learn that the president has to go see Nikolai. But before that, you know, he's he's talking to some of his advisors about what happened to the to the vice president. And one of the advisors says everything points to Nikolai. And then he's sort of like, well, in what way? And they're like, well, just in a in a general. It doesn't say that in the script, man. It just says points to just work with me here, just, motherfucker. Yeah, just that's my line. My line. Then you then you leave. <laughs> then the scene cuts, and I go get lunch. Don't, <laughs> I don't, don't have be a jerk for you, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> so he gets. I loved you in the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets to the um, to the uh, Antichrist building, and he gets in the elevator. And I can't help but think, I wonder if he's going to reverse this elevator. I wonder if he's going to push up and it's going to go down. But he, apparently he already used that trick. He already he's, used that trick. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's he doesn't moved like on to other himself. stuff. And he pulls out an evil green vial. Just right. It, 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 like, like, hey, this is going to be important later. See, it's green and there's evil in it. He has the ooze from the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> what, why did I call you here? No reason. It has, definitely has nothing to do with these glass vials of poison that i'm juggling right now and they're they're irrelevant don't don't even just think want that. you to watch me turn this upside down and right back up again it's the stuff that was in the green balls from the rock <laughs> exactly. exactly that's it now i also want to point out another great nikolai moment here where he points out that you know some people think i am satan doing good things doesn't matter to the christians and i think this is such a good point within this world of this movie like world peace has not impressed them at all Ending yeah, exactly. hunger has not impressed them in, at in all. In fact, it's suspicious to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. And uh, just just jumping back real quick to the beginning of the scene is one of my favorite moments. When when the president walks in, the Antichrist does that spin around in the office chair thing to, yeah. to greet him. But he did it like he was like Marilyn Monroe or something. He was like an ingenue. He's like, oh, hello. Didn't, didn't <laughs> yeah. see you there. President. The performance did not match the action. He not turned, at all. The, the chair slowly spins in the shadows, and then he's like, "Hey, girl, hey!" <laughs> oh my God, are you counting down till pumpkin spice lattes? Because this fat bitch is. Anyways, I'm the Antichrist. <laughs> 
Yeah. So, by the way, we should learn. We later learn just because I don't want anyone to be confused that the vial that he is so casually playing with is a biological weapon, which makes him taking it out of the case and just tilting it around make no fucking sense. <laughs> just like loop de loo anthrax loop de loo virus. <laughs> well, and also like the, the, this is something he's trying to keep secret from the president. You know, so like, you know, the president has to later find out, oh, the green gas. Why would you show him that you had a green gas? Oh, this? This is just like uh, my new lava lamp. Yeah. Exactly. Why is it in? Why do you have four of them and why is there no light? Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. <laughs> so here we are 25 minutes into this fucking movie. It hasn't remotely started to establish a plot, but it will at this point bring in yet another middle aged blonde woman we're supposed to keep track of. <laughs> this one is uh, Miss Miller. Yes, and she's from the militia. She's the lady who machine gunned the bad guys. And we know that because she says John was a good he was man. A, John was a good man. And luckily, no one has said that to the president what? since then <laughs> or ever again. And that's how he knows. Wink. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Apparently, John didn't have a lot of friends. And then we, uh, we, then we cut back to Kirk because, like, we were all wondering what was going on with Kirk. Turns out it was uh, getting kidnapped and thrown in a van. Right. And then he is interrogated by the president himself. It's just so fucking weird. Okay, so again, if you're thinking to yourself, you guys are doing a really bad job of explaining this movie, why would the president kidnap Kirk Cameron? I don't know. The movie doesn't care. They never tell you. There is no reason ever given within this film for the president to kidnap Kirk Cameron. Ever. It just fucking happens so that you can bring the two of them together. And oh yeah. my God, if you ever doubted how shitty a fucking actor Kirk Cameron is, watch him literally sit across the table from Lou Gossett Jr. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, the contrast brutal. is really astounding. I mean, you have to imagine going to Le Sur and someone just takes a shit in the middle of your table and you're like, mm, okay, well, my chicken cordon bleu looks great, but the, I can see you ate a rubber band. <laughs> I don't know why a person would eat a rubber band. This is ruining my meal. Why? Don't you like your chicken? No, the chicken's fine. It's, 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 put a lot of chicken You should out. get more fiber in your diet. <laughs> That's all I have to say. So, and uh, yeah, exactly. Kirk can't act even from underneath a hood. No, no. So they've got this bag over his head, and the president's asking him all these enigmatic questions. And by the way, apparently... He doesn't know what the president's voice sounds like. He has no Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would recognize if I got hooded and put into a room and someone walked in and they sounded like Barack Obama, I'd be like, wait, is that Barack Obama? <laughs> <laughs> B-boy? Is that Bommy? Is that Barack Hussein Obama? I'm a big fan, man. Voted for you twice. Is that you? Not a lot of people sound like you. <laughs> and apparently... Everybody sounds like Lou Gossett Jr. because he doesn't clue in at all. So he starts asking him a bunch of Jesus-y questions. And it, Kirk's trying to play along because apparently being Christian is illegal now. Again, they haven't explained that yet. It just kind of comes up. You're supposed to catch up. And, I like that they call the Bible hate literature, though. Yeah. No, that was pretty <laughs> accurate. Yeah, exactly. I, that's what I, in my notes I wrote. They call the Bible hate literature. Good. Yeah. Good. Right, I'm glad. Right. I got to admit, I agree with a lot of the stuff on the Antichrist in this movie. I don't want to blow up churches or stop people from doing their stuff. But if we could all start calling the Bible hate literature, I think it would be a lot start. more clear. Oh, you want to read that? Go ahead. It's hate literature. Right. <laughs> So now at first Kirk's trying to bullshit him, right? And he's going like, why do you have this Bible? He's like, I was just researching it. Who do you work for? I work for Nikolai Carpathia, kind of. If you watch the second movie, you'll understand. And then, but, but then fucking Lou Gossett Jr. gets the better of him and he says, do you renounce the name of Jesus Christ? And he just can't say yes. Can't do it. Can't deny the Holy Spirit. No, you'll go to hell. Because so. he's too brave. <laughs> <laughs> or too cowardly to go to hell. So then they they pull the bag off of his head at this point, and he's supposed to be looking like a person who thinks he's about to get shot, but instead he looks like a person who's trying to squeeze out one little tiny nugget that's being very, very difficult. Yeah, exactly. Like It's just the one last kernel of corn. Yeah, exactly. Oh, another thing he gets accused of while he's still under the bag is that he's been stockpiling vaccines. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I assume his plan to fight off the Antichrist is to give all the kids autism. Am I right, Donald Trump? <laughs> We'll give everyone vaccines, and then no one will want hugs. <laughs> I mean, look, look, okay, 
you wouldn't stockpile vaccines. You would vaccinate people with them, right? <laughs> right. I mean, unless you were trying to keep people <laughs> from getting like it, 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 the vaccines, there would be no reason to stockpile yeah, them. Vaccines aren't the same thing as like Sudafed, and yeah, you could stockpile <laughs> them inside people. It's, yeah, it's exactly, perfect. exactly. Also, if you're wondering, hey, do those vaccines ever come into play? No, they don't. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we hear a lot about them uh, early in the movie, but no. Uh-uh. Also, by the way, he's hoarding medicine during an apocalypse. Is that not frowned upon by God right before a rap? It's not after either no. way? No, it's This fine. movie completely uh, transposed good guy and bad guy traits. I uh, uh, did not fucking get it. So so then, you know, like uh, Lou Gossett is, or Kirk is saying, well, you know, Nikolai's the Antichrist and he's going to murder all the Christians and shit. And Lou's going, huh, that's, that's funny that you say that. Uh, uh, yeah, any evidence? And he's like, I can read you from the Bible. Matthew 24, 3, idiot. At which point he reads something so vague that you could not po- – he, he acts like it's a scene from the Da Vinci Code, right? right. Where Ian McKellen's <laughs> like, look, you see this picture? It matches up exactly. I'm like, oh, I get it. But instead he's like, the word pestilences. And Lugas is like, my god, why didn't I realize? <laughs> and he gives us a fucking dictionary definition. Because the writers of this movie knew that just saying pestilences, people would be like, well, I don't know. A lot of things can be pestilences. <laughs> so he was like, Webster defines pestilences as pretty much anything I want it to me so maybe everyone gets the cold who knows it fits for me kirk away <laughs> well and then the president standing there like reading along with him like he's never heard of the fucking bible he's going hmm earthquakes and the antichrist this is interesting information right there's also a great moment where he goes well there's supposed to be earthquakes too and he goes well you can't stockpile against earthquakes yeah, yeah his, his <laughs> laugh line is oh well there are no vaccines for earthquakes i get it <sighs> right. It's a joke. That's and, a joke in this movie is that there are no vaccines for earthquakes. I'm sorry. That's the joke in this movie. There's We never try humor again, and it's probably a good thing. Although there is a great unintentional joke right after that where uh, the president reveals to Kirk – that uh, Nikolai has been bringing scientists from dozens of different fields. Mm-hmm. And he goes, dozens of different fields, biologists, chemists. And then they run out of scientists, the people <laughs> who wrote this movie. So they're like, science, <laughs> science, <laughs> mists. Oh, God. What are those people who do the weathermen? Weathermen? <laughs> Cre- chefs? <laughs> Pilots. Pilots deal in silence. I saw the first movie. Oh, yeah, right. They deal in facts. Um, yeah, no, the, the the amount of times that, like, this movie tips its hands of knowing absolutely nothing about science are fucking hilarious. That's probably my favorite aspect of this movie. Uh, my least favorite might actually be the next scene, uh, which was clearly, like, contractually obligated to Kirk's wife uh, because Hattie, the bitchy stewardess turned UN lady from the first couple of movies, evil shows Ann up. Coulter. Bad Ann Coulter. Coulter. Yeah, evil, right. evil <laughs> Ann Coulter shows up. <laughs> yeah. And I, I have to say, that, like, there's nothing in this scene that makes any fucking sense. She appears in this movie like four fucking times. Nothing. Like, there's never a reason for her to be there. Her character never, like, serves a function. Like, nothing ever comes back that she says. It's She was just like, God damn it, Kirk, if you're going to be in this movie, they better write a part for me in it again. <laughs> right. So, no one really likes you, and your part doesn't make any sense. You said I could be in the movie. All right, fine, you can be in the movie. <laughs> so, he says, what if she, what if he gives her a Bible, and then we never fucking see her again? Okay, Sounds yes. great. Let's do it. <laughs> We got 10 minutes to fill. So they have this very weird moment where two identical guys, she's like, oh, so I hear you got married. You know, Rayford and I, well, I hope it works out for you. Like, it's supposed to be bitchy and backhanded, but Christians don't know how meanness works. I mean, they know how evil works because they'll be like, you can't get married here. But they don't know how bitchiness works because that's what normal people do. So they're like, so I hope you always wear a hat. Mother. I don't know. <laughs> Something mean. What do mean people say? <laughs> I'm Jewish. Does that mean? <laughs> uh, so now this is also where we learn that um, the pestilences have begun, and apparently the AIDS monkey in question is hanging out at all the churches. Yes, exactly. They're attacking the churches with biological warfare, which makes about as much sense as trying to get the peanut butter out of your fridge by lighting it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, 
like bio warfare is the worst possible way you could target one group of yes, people yes. amongst <laughs> people you don't want to target. It's like, well, do you think Christians will have contact with anybody else in the country? No. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so you just want to give everyone in America this virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I want it to start <laughs> right. in the churches. <laughs> oh, shit. And like everything else in this movie, it makes no fucking sense. And then we go back to the president where he's apparently trying to fuck Miss Miller, who, yes, exactly. again, is one of the three. Is, is she, she's, she's not, not an Ann Coulter at all, is, is she? She's, is she good Gwyneth Paltrow? She's, I think she's good Gwyneth Paltrow. Anyway. Good, yeah, she's good Gwyneth Paltrow. So we fucking, so his cover apparently, so from the fact that she said a sentence, he knows that she's a good guy and that they need to have a secret meetup. So his cover for that is to get room service and red wine delivered to the Oval Office yeah. and <laughs> indicate to his guards and the, the person bringing him the food like, don't worry, me and her are going to be fucking for the next few hours. Yeah, right. You guys can go. <laughs> No, I don't need a condom. I'm going to ride this raw dog style. <laughs> so, yeah, so I guess now the president and Miss Miller are going to go, like, sleuthing? The thi- Yeah, the things that the president does on his own in this movie are fucking crazy. It's like learning that Barack Obama did his own grocery shopping. That's how crazy <laughs> right. this movie is. Like, well, we need eggs. White House needs <laughs> eggs. All right, I'll go... <laughs> Can I borrow a car? First, I don't actually have my own car at this point. Does anyone have a... just need a Honda Accord. Going to go to a K, Trader K's down the street. Get some, get some cigarettes because I smoke. So Yes, yes, he does. They, yeah, yeah. Most people don't know that. Um, so and, and then she's, I guess, spilling the beans on the evil plans and the biological weapons, basically, too. Um, and she says, you know, well, there's... Again... Scientists are evil. We know that there are top scientists from all over the world here in the U.S., but we don't know where they are. Well, then how do you know they're in the U.S.? Shut up. It doesn't say that in the fucking script. Just, Stop asking. It just feels sciencey in here. I can tell. All of the all of the war machine figurines have been bought recently. I could just tell there are scientists around. Okay, you can just tell the D and D meetup group has gotten much larger. There are scientists around. I'm just aware. No one's fucking anyone. <laughs> Trust me. It must be a bunch of scientists or a Christian movie. And again, if I have to keep track of three nearly identical middle-aged blonde women in this movie, one of them can't suddenly mid-scene be wearing a ponytail. Yeah, exactly. Right. They just change. They change absolutely everything. I, I wrote in my notes at this point, this movie has introduced two new characters entirely cold, switched a black guy, and they just expect us to go with it. Yeah, exactly. They were really hoping we would keep up. And again, like just because this scene was in danger of getting exciting, we then move back over to Kirk uh, and his stockpiled vaccines for a minute just to bring everything, slow everything back down. Right. Again, and he's, this, there's this weird sort of comedy moment where he pulls all these, this big thing of vaccines and he's like, these vaccines weigh a ton, which not true. They're little vials, but never mind. <laughs> well, but he's got them in like a steel reinforced bulletproof briefcase. Maybe that's where the weight is. Right. Exactly. And then it's also, again, I wrote, why, why do people have the disease? You have vaccines. They should have been vaccinated. Right. <laughs> That's what, like, you're, you're an accessory now, dumbass. There's nothing you, you can't give someone a vaccine once they have the disease. I think they uh, thought, like, vaccines are just like, <laughs> get better shots. Well, and, and not only that, but they don't even know what the disease is. Apparently this is a novel biological weapon that was just created, so there can't be a fucking vaccine for it. Exactly. If an evil demon decides to strike the world with a new pestilence, it doesn't matter how many tetanus shots and rubella vaccines you have. How does that help? It's okay. I got I was vaccinated for mumps. I had chicken pox as a kid, so it's fine. He's got a new crossbreed of <laughs> cancer and anthrax. It's Anti-Christ. fine. <laughs> And is it just me, or does Chloe deliver every line in the first act of this movie as though she really has to pee? She is in such a hurry to get off fucking camera every time she's on it. And get to the craft services table. (laughs) (laughs) And this is another great moment where he says, we can't die until God says it's time. And I just wrote in my note, except Chris. Fuck Chris. (laughs) Chris can die. 
God was like, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, you're better off dead anyway with that ugly ass fucking yeah meat. Mongolian barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> So now we go back, and again, no purpose in that scene, by the way. We just had to establish once again that Kirk Cameron was in this fucking movie, I guess. So then we go back to the the president and Miss Miller, who are apparently, like I said, they're out sleuthing, and I guess they're going to break into Nikolai's evil bunker? Yeah. Yeah, so they're adventure president. Which they do incredibly girl. easily, by the way. Yeah. The security, <laughs> they, very they, they lax. Two barely armed civilians just like, eh, 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 eh. There we are. Good. Great. No <laughs> fake identities, anything. They apparently just like passed through the fence like fucking Kitty Pride and just walked and, into this military and base. It's the fucking president. Fairly <laughs> recognizable dude. Yeah, exactly. Oh, hey, isn't that the president? Nope, never mind. <laughs> At which point we discover Nikolai's evil plan as though bioweapons didn't make little enough sense. The bioweapons are being delivered via the fucking Bible. <laughs> That thing made out of paper? That's where the viruses are surviving. <laughs> right? How does, oh, Jesus. They just don't fucking get it. Yes, they come to an evil underground laboratory where the Antichrist is poisoning Bibles. He's just pouring this green smoke on the Bibles, which is apparently what's keeping the disease. Who the fuck knows? Ah, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, but it, yeah. Bibles are a a legitimate vector for diseases. Um, no, that actually probably would. That's why they say you should always fist bump, never trade Bibles. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'd also like to point out that the the precept here is that all the top scientists in the world that we keep talking about are perfectly willing to murder humanity by poisoning Bibles. I mean, they're all here. They you can see what's going on quite clearly through the big glass windows that everyone always puts in their evil bunker in case anyone wants to look in. So, like, this movie is postulating that the top scientists in dozens of fields, like weatherman and pilot, are all <laughs> like, yeah, no, kill humanity by poison. Okay, sure, yeah, why not? Sure, yeah, no, totally fine. It's fine. What, what are we doing with these bombs again? Don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about it, Ryan. All right? Today is Taco Tuesday. That's what I know. I know today is Taco Tuesday. And if we finish poisoning these Bibles, we get to go to Taco Tuesday before Nick does. And you know Nick is going to use all the sour cream because they never buy enough sour cream. So can we just poison these Bibles with these vape machines and get down to the cafeteria? Fine, fine. And it's also worth pointing out here, by the way, that all the Bibles have the same cover. Yeah. Right. So, like, they're only poisoning, like, Gideon Bibles. They're only poisoning red Bibles with gold covers. That's going to come in and become important later because they keep saying the Bibles are poisoned, but nobody ever points out. Just the red ones with the gold lettering, though, guys. If you have a white Bible, you're fine. Yeah, well, no, they probably had a, another batch of white Bibles. Oh, right. They, well, like, yeah, they were doing that. It's white Bibles on Wednesdays. Yeah, exactly. White Bibles <laughs> from first. <laughs> what Bibles are we poisoning today? Ooh, the Catholic Bible. That's the, the new American Bible. I love this one. This is great. <laughs> By the way, if anyone wants to get together and poison the new American Bible, I'm not like a hundred percent against it. <laughs> like, I, like, I feel like we should probably do something better than that. But if someone was like, oh, he poisoned the New American Bible, I'd be like, yeah, he should probably go to jail for like a year <laughs> or two. I, poisoning bad. New American Bible. Also <laughs> bad. And also, again, I don't think we can possibly overstate how ridiculous the green gas that they're using to do this is. It's right. like bright. It's it's like the gaseous form of the I don't know slime from you can't do that on television. It is yeah, exactly. neon fucking green. I'm sorry, Mr. Bible. That's not the answer. It's time to get gacked. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a it looks like a cartoon fart. Yes, it looks like exactly. a cartoon <laughs> fart is being used to poison the Bible. Like the Bible should anthropomorphically come to life and go, Ooh, who's been eating beans? <laughs> it would make more sense than the rest of this movie, by the way, if a Bible came to life and said that. Sure, why not? And of course, somehow or another, the president and Miss Miller trip the alarm now and the bad guys are on to him, so they have to run away. Right. It's the plot moving forward alarm. Bam, bam, <laughs> bam. <laughs> them leaving doesn't make sense. Bam. So they run away. By the way, none of these guards are like, is that the president? No. I feel like that's the president. <laughs> now, I, I want to point this out, too. And this is not obviously just this movie. This is all action movies. So at one point, the, the, the president is wrestling with a bad guy, and him and the bad guy fall down the stairs. And they follow the falling downstairs rules for an action movie, which go like this. A, you roll. You don't, like, slide at any point. B, 
you go all the way to the next landing. You never stop midway down the stairs. C, if you're a bad guy, you break your fucking neck and die. And D, if you're a good guy, you get a scratch and a very temporary uh, limp out of it. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, if you're a good guy, it doesn't matter the fuck at all. You're just like, oh, good. I was on – also, usually the good guy in action movie tropes is on top, and that's why we're like, oh, the bad guy broke his neck because he was on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's how breaking your neck works. <laughs> but in this case, he was on the bottom, and he still was fine. Yeah, right, right. He hit all of the stairs in the ground on the way down. So the question is, what broke that guy's neck? <laughs> right. <laughs> we're supposed to assume that he just traveled through space and his neck snapped like fucking Scorpion from Mortal Kombat <laughs> Annihilation. He was like, Dark! Which, by the way, we know that he broke his neck because his nose is bleeding. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly, as it so often does. He's got the good old dead guy nosebleed. <laughs> so they they escape because apparently none of the guards thinks, oh, the alarm's been tripped. Let's Let's have somebody stand by the door. In case somebody no. goes out it. No, 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 They just leave. Yeah, so they just, just run leave. out. Aren't you the president? No! <laughs> Bye! All right, fine. And now we <laughs> learn, uh, we, we cut over back to the church and we learn that the second string Theo has, uh, he's got the mystery pestilence too, so. Yes, and this is the first example of this disease. Now this disease appears to be can't breathe shiny face itis. <laughs> <laughs> that appears to be the disease that everyone gets in this movie. There's no other symptoms. <laughs> they just cough and get shinier and shinier and then they die. Well, and they, and they, and they're, they talk lower and lower the more of the disease. Oh, and they whisper. Get. Yes. yes, they whisper <laughs> like Slower, nobody's yeah. fucking business. Forget the hell they describe in this movie. The Christian hell was sound editing this fucking oh, right. film. Oh. How many goddamn editors did they go through before someone was like, you have to talk into the mic. <laughs> you have to. You have to. Did you use no microphones? <laughs> okay, Dave, just sit down. We'll talk it through. You talk it through. <laughs> you talk it through. I've had to get Lou Gossett Jr. back into audibility, and he's speaking at normal volume. <laughs> whip, gobbledy, whip, whip, wobbledy. No, no, that, that's what the original tag sounds like. I've been doing all the ADR myself. <laughs> I got Bill Cosby in the other room doing four hours of ADR. <laughs> The thing about a dream is, you look like you could use a drink. No, Bill, for the third time. <laughs> and uh, we also, the Antichrist pops in here for a second, uh, because this is a stupid fucking dream sequence to treat Theo for his disease. And I just wrote down, like, man, the Antichrist has excellent bedside manner. He's very, yeah, exactly. very polite. The, the Antichrist is by far the most doctor-like of any of the medical care specialists we see in this entire three-movie series. Oh, yes. He's the only one wearing a mask. He's the only one who's like, how are you feeling? Have some water. Everyone else is like, you should pray to Jesus because you're super <laughs> thick. <laughs> He's the only person in the whole place the entire time, the tuberculosis ward, that wears a mask. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Also... Three movies, three fucking go fuck yourself dream sequences. Oh, God. Three moments where we're like, oh, okay, this is an interesting turn in the plot. No, it's not. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> it's a dream. Yeah, just in case this movie was in danger of making sense. And again, not just this movie, but another one of the movie tropes that drives me up a fucking wall. This is a nightmare when he realizes that the Antichrist is there. So it cuts to him waking up and he does the whole like sitting straight up, you know, screaming thing when he wakes up. Okay. That is physically fucking impossible. You cannot wake up sitting up. That the human body that would be like floating yourself awake. Okay, that's how. Just to, to be fair, that's exactly how I wake up every morning. I wake up <laughs> and then I just, just straight at ninety degree angle <laughs> with my morning boner keeping me afloat. It's it's, it's a leverage thing. You gotta you gotta hoist yourself forward. <laughs> If you look at the show notes for the episode, there's a diagram I've drawn is very clearly how to hoist your morning wood. That's what it's for. It's for leverage. You use it as sort of like a pole vault into an upright position in case you had a nightmare. <laughs> oh, God, drives me the fuck nuts. And then we go to the – in case you were wondering if this militia lady had a secret underground hideout, she does, and we now go to that. <laughs> right. At which point we find out that Nikolai is planning to nuke – America. <laughs> right. Okay. So this, uh, I, I loved that fucking scene because he's talking to like, okay, there's, there's a bunch of like people with British accents on cameras, which means global conferencing in, in movies. Right. And the guy says, take a look. We, you know, we got this off of a satellite or whatever. And 
it's it's missile command transposed on a fucking <laughs> map of the U.S. And it's like because apparently the people in this fucking universe don't believe that you would get the idea of, you know, America's going to get nuked unless you see lines being drawn on a piece of paper towards <laughs> cities, I guess. Yeah, they go, we, we intercepted their communication. It's this screenshot from Spy Hunter and we're going to be attacked <laughs> right. by this. Uh, really you remember the movie car. War Games? We popped in a DVD <laughs> of that. Will that be OK? <laughs> exactly. And then we cut back over to uh, Kirk Cameron again because we just can't get away from him. And uh, uh, apparently the fucking rabies iron sack is cop knocking at, at, at his uh, apartment door. Again, I should probably mention this is a completely different place than where he lived the last time in the last movie. But he is three movies, three different apartments. Yep, uh huh. <laughs> in different cities, in three different cities. And I too. love he walks in and goes, "Want to know where your wife is?" And I was like, "Yeah, Ray, I do want to know where his wife is." <laughs> He's mad that she's doing the thing that they all knew they were gonna do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which was go to the church to take care of sick people. At which point. Kirk tries to get out of the house and Steel Hands G.I. Joe has to hold his forehead at arm's length like a kid getting his lunch money taken. He's like, you gotta get it. You, you let go of me, you big captain bully. So then uh, he calls Chloe to find out if, if, if she's okay. And he's like, oh, I'm coming right away. And uh, she's like, no, stay there. Maybe you can find a cure or a vaccine. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Slow down, guys. First of all. Why the fuck would a reporter be able to find a cure for a goddamn disease? And secondly, again, vaccine is not a synonym for antidote. Yes, thank you. You can't, it's not gonna, everybody's sick already. Finding a vaccine is, it's too late. You don't make a parachute on your way down. What the fuck are That's you That's the word about? we were looking for. Antidote. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and I knew it was something with a van. Like an an, an A in it. There was an I in there and an N. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, though, I don't have either of those things. Like, I'm totally unvaccinated. Milk leg was <laughs> rough. It's okay. My parents prayed me better. Yeah, right. You walk with a terrible twisted claw of a leg. Yeah, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> this is better. Um, and then. <laughs> At least I like hugs. <laughs> so, eventually, at, at this point, like, Kirk's trying to decide should he go to the church, but if he goes to the church, he's gonna get Bible AIDS too, or whatever. And then the President of the United States calls Buck to warn him that the poison is in the Bible. Why does he do that? No fucking reason. Oh, because they met before, and as the president says, I don't want to lose another good friend. Another good friend who he met 24 hours ago. <laughs> right, had like an eight-minute interrogation <laughs> conversation with him, that's it. The president bonds like a baby duck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see you now. You're my mama. Quick, quick. I'm the president. <laughs> and uh, By the way, didn't he take that phone call? While they're talking to God, like in the middle of a prayer. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, because he was yeah. in a hurry, he, he so they had takes, to stop and pray. Takes a phone call. Yeah, God, just uh, hold on a second. I can take this. Uh, it's a customer <laughs> satisfaction Ooh, God, survey. God, I'm so sorry. From, uh, I got to take this. <laughs> Ten minutes, Max, I mean, me right back. <laughs> it's Verizon. And you see, because that's because Kirk's character never saw gr no greater love, which tells you that you're a bad husband if you take <laughs> phone <Right>. calls. <laughs> Obviously. And then we go to uh, Chloe doing what she does best in these movies, which is hanging around the terminally ill. <laughs> right, exactly. Which I love has a great moment with Bruce's character where Bruce is like, oh, no, it's my fault. I brought people to the Bibles. And she's like, no, it's not your fault. And I'm like, yeah, man, yeah, it's your no, fault. Absolutely. <laughs> That's, that is very <laughs> much your fault. If I was like, everyone, try this cheese dip. And then everyone got food poisoning. They'd be like, oh, yeah, that's my fault. <laughs> I recommended the cheese dip. That's on me. But that's okay because they have a little dying whisper sing off. Oh, oh my, my God. God, this was rough. It's quarantine the musicals. <laughs> Worst <laughs> duet ever recorded. They're, they're both so you think you can key, gasp? They're both off time, it's, and they're whisper singing. We sing the dying song together, <laughs> you and I. We're gonna die. It, You're gonna it, 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 Jesus dying God. song. It, it, Somebody's off. I wish that this disease. If I can, if I ever make crazy billionaire money, I'm gonna remake this movie shot for shot. But instead of whisper tuberculosis, <laughs> everyone's gonna have the whatever disease just gives you the shits until you die. <laughs> that thing that killed everyone during World War One. Yeah. So that he's like, I would believe. Oh God, 
Oh god, it's coming out of me like lava. <laughs> We'd CGI in some of that green smoke. That would be awesome. <laughs> it just comes up out of the covers from underneath it. <laughs> don't lift off my blankets. I don't want you to have to see it. Sorry. I look like I had chocolate covered gummy bears in my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> they say that M&M's melt in your hand, not in your mouth, but they also melt in your digestive tract. <laughs> so then we go back to Kirk, who's still, I guess, trying to decide whether to go rescue Chloe from Bible Aids. And then I guess he accidentally wanders into the tree cave on Dagobah. <laughs> the fuck right, was yeah. going on with this scene? Yeah, he has an unbreakable moment with the Bible, yeah, like Bruce Willis just touches and he's like, oh, I know this Bible raped somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, results in him having a vision where black guy Bruce is just saying the word Abraham over and over again. <laughs> like, because of Kirk's vision, we're supposed to get that it's about sacrifice and all great religious leaders have sacrificed. Which, by the way, nobody fucking does in this movie, but never mind. Um, he's just him going, Abraham. Abraham. Well, and there's some weird bullshit because like I because they kept cutting back and forth between Kirk and Bruce, and I'm like, are they shining now between the two? Of them? <laughs> but also, he says at one point, like, um, what do all servants of God have in common? And and I'm I'm thinking, um, delusion. Yeah, right, right. And I figured it was going to be a clinical diagnosis, but it turned out M- to be my great schizophrenia. A, according to him. Indefatigability and wings, what they all share. <laughs> Head injury. Uh, yeah. Head injury. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Two points. Oh, being a witness to things during a period of time when people can't check them against reality. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. No video cameras. <laughs> uh, so then we cut over to Rayford um, fighting our HP Lovecraft, <laughs> where he is he's having a fight with a Hattie because you can't leave the hangar because it's your job like he it's like he's like trying to get a sick day off right well but he can't but not just a sick day off he also wants to steal the airplane you know because he's right. just, just <laughs> take the airplane yeah. he wants to take, take the this. antichrist right plane there. yeah exactly race car sword biter is like just like well but my 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 daughter's sick so i was going to take this plane to chicago which is where we were in the movie last time you saw us, but now we're somewhere else apparently. So, uh, can I have his plane? And she says, no, I guess. No. But then we realized that she only said no because she's pregnant with the Antichrist baby. And this brought a question to mind. <laughs> what is the Antichrist's baby? Oh, good call. It's not the Antichrist. Not- <laughs> the Antichrist is the Antichrist. <laughs> it's not the devil. The devil is the father of the Grand Antichrist. Son yeah. of Satan. So is the Antichrist baby just a guy? Because that's, <laughs> that's rough on that baby. <laughs> that baby is just I'm like okay, growing guys. up. So your dad's the Antichrist and your grandpa's Satan. What do you do? I don't know. I like Connect Four. I'm like really good at Connect Four. I mean, it's a solved game. So like, it's, whoo. <laughs> it's thinking of getting into hum- human resources. Oh, that's pretty evil. Yeah, yeah, you know. A lot of pressure from the family and third generation evil. <laughs> Trying to go my own way about it. He's super hipster evil and he's like, mm, I'm going to gentrify all of Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I invented the hashtag all lives matter. <laughs> oh, I also love that we, we learn that Hattie is pregnant when Mandy uses her magic uterus powers. You know, just looks her in the eye and goes, you're pregnant, aren't you? I can tell you're pregnant. I can smell the cum still inside you. <laughs> it's my little, it's my little gift. What can I say? <laughs> At which point he gives her his Bible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I wrote in my notes here, have my Bible. I'm 80% sure it's not poison. Right, right. <laughs> and, and even if it isn't, you get murdered for owning these, by the way. So have fun. <laughs> here, have a murder book. <laughs> Hate literature. <laughs> And then we get this just completely meaningless scene uh, between the president and the Antichrist in the Oval Office because apparently they literally were going like back and forth on as they wrote the script. You know, Kirk scene loose scene, Kirk scene loose scene. <laughs> yeah, was the Antichrist waiting for the president in the Oval Office, just like looking at his shit? Yes, and, like, <laughs> like, messing around with his stuff on his desk. Oh, where, where'd you go? U pen, safety, Ivy, whatever, no big deal. <laughs> I, I noticed that you have a, one of these little Newton cradle things. <laughs> it was great. You know, if you pull all, all three marbles and then knock it, it, they still three on the other side. It's like that. I don't, how do those things work? Who yeah, knows, right? It's crazy. It's cool. You gotta stop them with your hands though. That noise gets irritating after a second. <laughs> 
And that's basically everything that happens in that scene. Yeah. Yeah. They they have, they have this thing. <laughs> I just wrote in my notes. Nothing happened in this scene. Right. <laughs> that's about right. Well, he does. He does turn to him at one point. Uh, the Antichrist turns to the uh, president and says, "You look different." You know, because the president murdered somebody, and and I right, guess the yeah, Antichrist can smell that like Mandy can smell pregnancy come. Oh, the Antichrist can smell murder, and Ray Ban Snifart can smell if someone's uh, flown on a plane. <laughs> right. <and laughs> Kirk can smell if someone's been praying. It's great. Everyone's got a mutant power. It's the world's worst X Men. <laughs> All right, so now I guess something about this particular meeting with the Antichrist made Lou go all homicidal. So he goes back to the secret underground resistance fighters to tell him that now he's going to kill the Antichrist. Right, and his plan seems to be, we're going to kill him by killing him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but all the other guys, the guys on the TVs, the British guys and stuff, seem to be anti-contingency plan because they don't like that at all. No, their plan seems to be, like, developing a military and a defense, and he's like, no, 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 trust me, I'm going to shoot this one guy with a ceramic gun, and it's going to be great. <laughs> oh, and can I, again, not just this movie, a lot of fucking action movies, but ceramic gun is not a fucking thing. That would be like saying I have a liquid sword. The heat of a fucking bullet would blow a goddamn ceramic gun into a gazillion pieces that does not exist, and it will never exist. Sorry, no, I hate to uh, disagree with you, but I actually made a ceramic gun, which I have right here, and I'm going to fire it on the... Oh, no, it doesn't fire, because that requires metal parts. Because it's goddamn vase material. Yes, yes, Yeah, exactly. it turns out fire is re related to the gun thing. I have a, a big... I have a ceramic thing shaped like a gun that I could point at him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Apparently, they did their fact-checking in Die Hard 2. Right, Kill exactly. With chocolate revolver. <laughs> they, they did it... They did their fact-checking in my grandma's mass chain emails. The terrorists can now 3D print a gun, which they may not, doesn't show up on a um, Lego gun. <laughs> that would have made exactly as much sense if he had pulled out a Obama. gun made a connects. Anyway, and then also... Vote for McCain. By the way, also the president apparently has a secret stash of buttons that you press that make nuclear missiles come and blow you up <laughs> go to that button yeah because apparently the president occasionally has a need for that so he has one but they know where the antichrist is they know where he works you don't have to be in the, you could just have it go there right well just right have right. it go to that building when you're not in it if that's what you're sorry doing. i'm confused you i don't understand what who who is holding the the heat seeking button in that situation where does the missile where, do they sneak they mail him the button i get what you're saying he they mail him the button then press he here. and then you put a yeah press and then he gets oh, i get it smart <laughs> smarter than this movie yes right <laughs> that would be a better idea so and and then also again all action movies but while the president is in the uh in the elevator he pulls out his ceramic gun and chambers around like why wouldn't you have done that when you loaded the fucking gun would you yeah. like, now that I'm in the elevator, I guess I can chamber. The, what the fuck was the point of that? Now's the time to make sure that this gun has bullets. <laughs> right, right. Exactly, exactly. At which point we get the Antichrist magic special. Oh, God. Where he does some pain. He's like, oh, was this your special bomb heat sinking button? <laughs> I wanted so badly for it to just be like, mind free! <laughs> Antichrist! Check your wallet. <laughs> but then he, he, so he takes the little button that was supposed to make the nuclear bomb there and he crushes it into dust and I'm like, how do you do that without pushing the button? It's a ceramic button. <laughs> it's a ceramic button. He used a ceramic button. That's why I crushed it. So speaking of ceramic, um, so the president pulls out his ceramic gun and he's, and he's using the Hold it on the guy I'm about to shoot for a really long time strategy that's very popular in the second act of mm. movies. Yeah. And and the Antichrist, he says, all right, yeah, just uh, before you shoot me, though, um, check this out. And he turns on like 12 TV screens and he's, World War Three is starting now. Yeah. Now, like, all like, of like, his, like his first pitch at 735 and World War Three. Go. Uh, right. Well, I'm thinking to myself, like, what if it had been a commercial? Would he have just said, okay, <laughs> oh, no, sorry, okay, hold on, hold on a second, it's, I discount, double check, yeah, yeah, we get it, we get it, we get it, hold on, hold on, no, they have to tell you, like, all the other stuff that, no, the, that the medicine the can give you, all of the side it. effects, but as soon as this is done, <laughs> you'll see what I was gonna, the point of this. I wanted one news station not to be covering it. This summer, a fun new way to stay cool. Wait, what's the story? A fun new way to stay cool is with water willies. Back to Joe Hanskin. 
Also, I want to point out that Lou Gossett in this scene looks surprised that TVs exist. He doesn't look surprised at what's on them, but when he's like, look at this, Lou Gossett's already like, oh, why are those, are those tiny people? <laughs> Get them out of those fish tanks. <laughs> So, again, like, this bizarre military campaign includes bombing the city the Antichrist is in. Because out the windows, you're seeing explosions like at the end of Fight Club, every few <laughs> seconds, except really poorly CGI'd, every few seconds. So, like, all of Earth is being bombed. I mean, we, we, go, we go to China in this scene. We go to England. We go to Chicago. We're in D.C. We're in New York. We're in L.A. And everybody is being bombed. What the fuck kind of war is this? Right. He doesn't even set up, like, why don't you guys, you bomb everything but, like, right around my building. Just right, don't, right. Because I, I work there at the top floor. I have the whole top floor to myself. It's a big deal. Just don't, like, you know, 10 block radius. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Just, like, even if it's five. Even if it's five. Oh, you know what, though? There's this really great Chili's that I like on the like, third and 47th. So you just... It's fucking great. Also, who are these soldiers? Soldiers from where? From Nikolai? Right. Where do those people live that they're fighting themselves? Yeah, exactly. Against who from which military? The NATO <laughs> military is made out of, like, our country. Right. Not yeah, like, exactly. They don't have a separate – where do they get their military? Oh, well, these guys are from Sweden. They're just they're just really cooperative. <laughs> so now Lou Gossett shoots the, uh, the Antichrist, but apparently bullets pass through him and also his suit. He's got a magic suit that he's wearing. <laughs> And then we have this phenomenal, awesome combination of the Dirty Harry, You Feel Lucky punk with the Jim Carrey, The Pen is Blue scene. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's an amazing moment. He goes, is it empty? And I just wrote in my notes, no, it's an automatic weapon. Right. That's <laughs> the, fire the bullets go up into the chamber no matter what. There's a spring at the bottom. You're thinking about a revolver in which how many bullets, but there's just... The chamber, that's yeah. not how those guns work. You can tell very clearly they look empty. That's why we invented them that way. Right. So apparently the Antichrist, by the way, is using, just to be clear here, like telekinetic mind control powers to force the president to put the gun to his own head. Which right. Which apparently he could do to anyone at any time and has just chosen not to. He's just chosen to shoot those guys for movie yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because, listen, everyone in this movie, from the president to the Antichrist, they're a hands-on guy. They do stuff themselves. Right, right. <laughs> Why can't we just send a nuke to his house? Because he's a hands-on right. guy. He's got to do it himself. <laughs> i got to be there. And this is when we get, like, so it, I guess it, the Antichrist changes his mind about making the president shoot himself in the head. And instead, he goes for the motherfucking force choke. <laughs> Force choke slash throw through a window. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> At which point I wrote in my note, I can't emphasize enough how much I like and am rooting for the Antichrist in this movie. <laughs> he was awesome. So he throws the president out of his 900th floor window. Which is about 15 feet off the ground. Apparently, because the fucking president falls onto a car and he's just fine. He has this... He has this weird moment with God where he looks up and he's like, that's not physically possible. And then he looks up at heaven like, you rap scallion. <laughs> It's like, no, go down there and finish murdering. <laughs> right, him. right. Why would you not? No, no, no. If God's going to cheat, then I guess that's how we're going to play the game. You know, like, like I just want to point out that while Lou Gossett Jr. is sitting on the fucking car, he could have had him put his ceramic gun back to his head. You know, and shoot him like, oh, well, you know what? The force choke thing didn't work, but I bet that one that I also did. I that's I said I was going to do force choke. If force choke doesn't work, then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So apparently God, it, that's how we're supposed to where we're supposed to go with this, that God saved the president. Now, keep in mind, there are people being nuked every three seconds in every major city on Earth. But God decided to save the president here. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> So the bombs are falling, the president's fi plan failed miserably, and it was only by divine grace that he lived to see Act 3 at all. But just in case you're not already on the edge of your seat, I'm going to give the C segment the hard sell really quick. Will President Gossett Jr. overcome the powers of the Antichrist? Will this movie ever start making sense? Will we learn that skinny J.J. Watt is actually Luke's father? Find <laughs> out the answer to these questions and more when we return for the exciting conclusion to the exciting conclusion of the Left Behind trilogy. So... I have gathered you all of the scientists from all over the world today with one mission, and one mission alone, 
to take out Christianity. My plan is simple. We place a biological weapon in Bibles and then we allow Christians all over the United States to steal them. They will see themselves into their own graves. <laughs> oh, qu- sorry, question. Uh, y- yeah, uh, I'm a geologist. I'm, I'm not sure why I was brought in. Can I leave? Oh, uh, yes, sorry. Sorry, I guess I was a little hasty in gathering all of the world's scientists. Everyone who is not a biochemist or something to do with biological weapons is allowed to leave now. Oh, okay. Oh, no. we should all leave. It doesn't make any sense for us to be here. Uh, sorry, no, uh, another question. Go ahead. Hi, sorry. Yeah, you said you wanted to poison the Bibles with a biological weapon, but that's not how... Biological weapons work. Viruses won't just live for weeks in a Bible. They're, they're viruses. You can't just oh, yeah. put. Mm, okay. Poison well, what, what if what if you like sprayed them with green mist? Yeah, um, that's that's not a thing. Not viruses good. are invisible. Also, if we do a bio attack with a contagious disease, th- that's going to kill everybody, not just the people that touch the Bibles. Like. Like, why don't you use your own soldiers and just, you know, follow the Bibles and then shoot the people with bullets. Bullets that don't need to be kept alive in a Petri dish. Just regular shoot them. Okay, okay. I'm, not, I'm actually not really looking for feedback right now. I'm looking for Bibles, poisoned Bibles with like, anthrax or, or something. Can, can, can we do it or not? Well, I don't think we'll be able to do it. All right, great. And also, one more thing. I want the cure to be red wine. Can the cure be red wine? <laughs> oh, come on. What the fuck are you talking about? And we're back for more cruel and unusual cinema. When we last left our hero, he was limping away from a fatal fall as though he'd just stepped barefoot on a Lego. And he must be limping pretty quick because minutes later, with the bombs falling, he's back in the militia bunker. <laughs> Right, exactly. Where where we learn that everything, everywhere is being bombed and nuked, and the British people slash Muslim, J- Egyptian people <laughs> yeah, on the guy. other TV are also being nuked. Because we can see on the other end of their camera, their worlds are shaking, their paintings are falling off the wall, all that <laughs> right, right. stereotypical shit. Because everywhere in the world is getting bombed together. And they say, like, oh, it's over, we have to surrender. And I'm like... Surrender to who? <laughs> to who? Who are these soldiers? Where is everyone from? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, at which point the president announces that they've been played like a puppet, which is not a phrase, <laughs> not an expression, <laughs> played like a puppet. Oh, shit. At which point I love that they, this movie has this weird meta moment. It never comes back, but this movie has this weird meta moment where he's like, I went there and he had magic powers and knew about the transponder and he was bulletproof. And everyone goes, that's not fucking possible. You're a traitor, which is the logical way to behave. If someone walks in and they go, yeah, the reason why the bad guy let me live is because he's got magic powers and I survived a fall from an 85 story building. I'd be like, oh, you could just say I betrayed you guys. <laughs> You can just tell us. It's fine. (laughs) Let's not embarrass ourselves. And meanwhile, of course, Kirk Cameron's character continues to do nothing and serve no purpose in this movie. But we go back to him anyway for phone call purposes. Exactly. Where we learn that Chloe... Well, first of all, he says, how's Bruce? And she says, he's going home, which is very weird and infantile. Just one of those moments in this movie where I'm like, it's just say dying. Gross. <laughs> let's go to a farm oh, he's going upstate. to night night land. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to a farm yeah, upstate. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Where he can run and play with Morgan Friedman and Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Clarence Gilliard Rachel Jr. Rachel <laughs> And, of course, so we also learn here that Chloe now has Bible AIDS, too. She has whisper shiny face syndrome. <laughs> exactly. she, she either got it from the subway handrail or maybe she just spent days and days inside the quarantine building with <laughs> right? no mask on. What the fuck did licking you people. And she gets it in the course of that phone call. Yeah, well, she gets goes from, like, just perfectly normal to all completely shiny-faced, yeah. Yeah, because in the course of she's like, yeah, so Bruce isn't too epic. <laughs> <laughs> Rosebud, you're just like, whoa, that is fast acting. 
She must have extra read the Bible. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then Kirk says, this isn't the God I know. And I'm thinking, then you haven't read the Bible, motherfucker, because that's the God that's in there. Right. He's all about some pestilence and murder and fucking flooding the universe and shit. So. Right, and letting people suffer in silence while waiting for him to do something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then we get back to the president who's still trying to convince everybody that, no, no, the the, the, the guy, he really was uh, bulletproof, which I, I also love how he doesn't lead with that. Like, like right, when, when they're right. asking the president, like, what happened? And he's like, oh, he knew about the transponder, and uh, and I barely escaped with my... Oh, and also, he's magical and, and bulletproof. And- he had magic powers. <laughs> <He laughs> like, I forgot to mention that. Wait, I should have said that right up front. <laughs> oh, Larry already left. I'll text him. I'll text him. <laughs> Antichrist has magic powers, cannot be killed. <laughs> Note to self. <laughs> killed looks weird. Is that an ED? Looks like it should just be a D. <laughs> Oh, uh, English is funny. So Miss Miller, like you said, has like the only reasonable reaction to anything in this entire trilogy, which is to not believe the president. But when she's explaining why she doesn't believe him, she says, among the things that are unbelievable, she says, you fell out a window and walked away. Now, this leaves out a key piece of information because I've fallen out of a window and walked away before. You left out yeah. the 90 stories, lady. That's right. an important right. piece of your incredulity. Windows kill everyone who passes through them. It's like when Sirius <laughs> fell through the curtains. It's, you, you just die. The same time that you pass through a window, you die. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, so you just walked out of a door and you're not on fire. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, so even the one reasonable reaction has to be tinted with stupidity. And then we get back to Kirk, who is yelling at God, because it's just not a Christian movie until somebody is yelling at God. Exactly. And the, the, he has this moment where he goes, I could go to Chicago right now, because he's having a yelly breakup with God. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, except the whole world is being nuked. I don't <laughs> think that you're going to catch a fucking bus. That, you think the Fung Wa is still running? <laughs> <laughs> Sitting next to some guy who's got a chicken in a cage. Saul, whole world being nuked. Not really looking to talk to anyone. Thanks, <laughs> Saul. <laughs> Everyone's so unfriendly. And I also love that during his like breakup with God, he says he says to God, "Why did you do this to me, to Chloe?" And I'm thinking. Other people are getting their arms blown off by nuclear fucking bombs, and you're bitching about a dropped phone call, you narcissistic <laughs> ass monkey? Chloe's whispery and shiny. <laughs> also, all of Varan is dead or yeah, something. Yeah, right, you know? right. Every place on Earth is getting bombed nine times a minute, and you're worried about whole family's this getting shit. vaporized into light. But my girlfriend's a little <laughs> has the sniffles. Also, by the way... Kirk throws his phone like such a pussy in this scene. Oh yeah, he, he throws, he does the like limp wrist at his throw and so, his throw is so bad that they had to cut the scene and drop a phone onto a carpet. Exactly. It's very clearly, cause he, I guarantee you there were 25 takes of him going, <laughs> just, just, just misses the entire frame of the shot. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to point out, um, cause we're about to cut back, uh, we cut back momentarily to Lou Gossett Jr. In this scene, and he's... It, it didn't occur to me until later in this film that he is sweaty every fucking time we see him. Yeah. This is the sweatiest fucking movie since A Time to Kill. Yeah, this is a very, very sweaty movie where there's no penetration. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never a good reason for the sweaty. And then the screenwriters remembered that Mandy and Railroad Crowbar were in the movie, so we check back in with them, and they've just dropped in on quarantine for a quick visit, maskless visit. And- if you're wondering if they're going to have anything to say or do in the quarantine area that's going to relate to this movie, no, no they're not. Go fuck no. yourself. <laughs> Steel fight Heineken just goes to see her, and that's that's it. She's sick, and she's sick. Yeah, exactly. And he's very proud of her for having a fatal disease, apparently. Right, which is when we now move forward to, in time, to the beginning of the movie where uh, Lou Gossett Jr. is said he hopes he's not in hell. Right, we're back to the bombed-out White House where it all began. And then Kirk Cameron walks into the White House. It's, it's again, it's on fire. Every single room is on fire. Large flames. So he walks into the Oval Office and they just have a... Uh, a nice long conversation in a, a casual uh, chat building. in a burning building. Yes, yes, because Kirk went to D.C. to save the president's soul. <laughs> yep, last minute salvation. Exactly. That's what happened in the movie. Uh, Kirk Cameron decided he couldn't st- still any longer because the president was going to go to hell when he died, and then he 
It, it goes to the fucking Oval Office, the bombed out Oval Office. And Kirk, of course, walks up to the White House and it's been exploded and shit. And he says, you know what? He's probably sitting in the Oval Office all by himself. I'm just going to walk in. He can smell people praying. And, oh, Everyone right, right, can exactly. smell in this movie. They can smell who's been doing their thing. And this is where Kirk gets to deliver his Jesus died on the cross for us. Uh, uh, but not just died on the cross. He literally died. Right. <laughs> At one point he writes, he literally died. Uh-huh. And I wrote, oh, am I talking to a teenage daughter? Yeah, well, and, and because he didn't literally die. I mean, are you quoting the Bible or thus spoke Zarathustra here, man? He's like, he came back three fucking days later and now gets to be the king of the universe. If you told me that you could put me up on a fucking cross and I would die painfully, but three days later I get to come back and then get to be the fucking leader of the universe and oh, by the way, nobody ever has to go to hell again. Like, who wouldn't take that fucking deal? I wouldn't. I'm, I'm not great with pain. I just, I'd be like, oh, you know what? Let's let everyone work out their own thing like a very libertarian savior i'd be like listen if people are gonna get damned they're gonna get damned you know sort of bootstrap themselves into salvation how about that there have actually been studies that find when you don't help people save themselves they save themselves yeah yeah that's what i've just i would let the poor starve what (laughs) sorry and uh and then he gets the president to confess he actually confesses dear uh dear god um yeah you probably shouldn't have let me become president i let the uh antichrist take over the world <laughs> sorry no, about that. maybe you want to fix this no and oh, it's just, just, just that stupid question sorry no. so <laughs> slow and so boring his <sighs> like conversion scene it's like watching a retarded kid dictate a letter to santa out loud it's just like <laughs> dio <laughs> santa <laughs> My and you're like your name is Jimmy. Your name is Jimmy. You want a fire truck? Jesus. Oh. I also love that you know because people always in this in this movie and in Christian movies in general have this really bad habit of saying things that sound good until they explain what they mean. Because like uh, Kirk says to the president, "God can save you," and the president looks up and goes, "Good," because I'm sitting in a burned out, blown up. You know, he's like, "No, no, not from bombs and." And Bible aids and shit. He, well, he's not going to save you from that. He's, he's just going to save you from all the horrible stuff he plans on doing to you for beating off. He can save you from him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. God will help you from himself. <laughs> <laughs> also, so the, so the president's in the middle of his retarded Santa prayer. And Kirk interrupts him because I guess it's like, well, well, Lou's got God on the line. He wants to jump in and apologize for the phone thing. Like, oh, wait. Sorry. Sorry. Mr. Muffins was like when your grandma puts her dog on the phone. She's like, Mr. Muffins wants to say hi. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, OK. <laughs> hi, Mr. Muffins. <laughs> Oh, shit. And then we uh, check back in with Neo Theo, who takes longer to die than Fidel Castro, apparently. He's been dying for the last, like, 45 minutes of this movie. He's not there right. yet. At which point he asks for communion, which yeah. I think is – do, do – do, <laughs> I thought that was a Catholic thing. It I don't is. know a That's lot correct. about Christians. <laughs> That's a Catholic thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, apparently uh, everybody became Catholic at the, the end of this movie. I also love that he like he turns up to to fucking Ray Blamp shark wrestler and and he says, "My time is near." Like God just sent him a text to like CN five or something right, exactly. like that. Uh, everybody knows when they're about. He to got die an Uber alert, something. one of those things you can send yeah, someone. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you will reach your destination. Uh. <laughs> So please put a cracker in my dying mouth. Yes, it's exactly. Request. <laughs> exactly. I want to die choking on crumbs. <laughs> She's like, no, when I said a cracker in my mouth, I meant your dick, Ray. That's I, That was my euphemism. I wanted to suck you off a cracker. You didn't say Captain Ray. No yeah. cracker in the mouth for you. <laughs> it's like the Simon Says of talking to Ray for Steel. You didn't call me Captain, so I can't oh, hear you. Oh, where's that movie? <laughs> The Simon Says of Talking to Rayford Steele. That's my self-help book. <laughs> there you go. So now the the president and, and Kirk are, of course, discussing his inability to destroy the Antichrist. And the president says... As they walk through his fire hallway, and yeah, I just wrote in my note, is this your fire hallway? It's nice. I like it. I like what you've done. Fire. Thank you. It's like new Dutch. I got a new Dutch <laughs> thing going. It's, I like it a lot. It's more like old Dutch, but you know, shit. Um, so he also says, like, I can't kill the Antichrist because he's bulletproof and shit, but I can take out his command center. 
Right. Like, did a fucking fifth grader write this movie? They're going after the command center now? Right. They're going after the command center, from which we have seen him do nothing except watch TV and have conversations. Yeah, right. Like, exactly. So we have had no indication that that command center is necessary yet. No, it's just like a loft. No, yeah, he just stares away from the door to his office until somebody shows up. <laughs> yeah, until that's, that's somebody walks there. in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it also seemed to me like they like they had to break it to Kirk that he wasn't going to be involved in the final battle here on screen. Yeah. Cause like, cause Kirk is like, all right, Mr. President, what can I do? And the president's like, oh, you know, just annoy more people about Jesus or something. <laughs> and Kirk, like, Kirk Cameron is like visibly upset and he's just like, no, I'm supposed to, I'm, aren't I supposed no, remember to fight the I go Antichrist and I... at the, at the end, I, I, I I've pushed been practicing the button my sword like, skills, and that's what they showed me. And I get, why did I take all those stage combat classes? Then? <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, they tried filming it with Kirk first, but his girlish screams were too much, and they were like, "Lou, sorry, you got to do this one." What? Yeah, it's just like, look here, watch the daily. It's, ah, get off me, Antichrist! Get off me! And that's not even with the other actor. That was with the makeup lady. That's him talking to craft services, man. You gotta shoot this. Away, demo! <laughs> so God leaves uh, uh, Kirk all by... Or, I'm sorry, Lou leaves Kirk all by himself. And then he goes back for the third time. We get to watch him walk up to the uh, to the Antichrist's uh, office. But this time, God makes him invisible? Yeah. As he walks by the... He just repented. Now he's invisible. Oh, That's right, right. Works. Okay. But wouldn't the guys notice that the elevator opened and start moving, started moving up to the top floor, even if he was invisible? They did, and did they noticed. They nothing. just don't care, right? right. Yeah, right. <laughs> they, Guess, huh. Well, he does like fucking with elevators. That <laughs> antichrist. Why is so there probably... sweat dripping into the elevator? No, what's happening? There? <laughs> right, whatever. Just a just puddle just of sweat, sweat moving off. across the floor. <laughs> Not my job, man. Not my <laughs> fucking <laughs> job. <laughs> When you work for the Antichrist, though, I guess occasionally you just expect, like, I don't know, it's a sentient puddle of water. Who knows? It's the Antichrist. <laughs> right, right. It's probably his sister-in-law. Don't say mean shit. Good afternoon, <laughs> sir and or madam. And then, so the president wanders in, and he's got his, he, he has his replacement come nuke me button, um, which he presses. And then we see this horrible satellite CGI that makes you think this movie was made in 1994 and was a video game cutscene where apparently the nuclear <laughs> missiles that we have just floating around above the Earth at all times starts to orient itself to fire at the Antichrist. Right, exactly. It looked like a cutscene from Command and Conquer 2. Yes. <laughs> just Skylab just drops right into the building. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And then, of course, we get back to uh, to sweaty quarantine tuberculosis place where everyone is taking communion together. And I'm thinking, that's a good idea. You should have all the sick people share a cup with all the well people. <laughs> they should all just drink out of the same fucking cup. I wrote in my notes, hey, more communion. I was getting bored of all that nuclear war shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> So then Chloe all of a sudden starts to recover. And when she does, she says, I can breathe. And everybody else goes, yes, of, of, of course you can. That Could you not breathe before? That's a, I'm just impressed. I'm not even mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been breathing this entire time. Chloe, you've been breathing. No, I haven't been breathing. I just now started. Just started. Like when you were a kid and you used to have breath holding contests and that one kid used to cheat. And you'd be like, dude, yeah. you've held your breath for 85 minutes. What are you, the fucking... <laughs> You got Michael Phelps over here, nine-year-old Michael Phelps. Let me plug your nose. No, I have a cold. You fucking cheater. You know what you did. But yeah, I, I had a sad thought during this scene when they were all taking communion. Because here's the thing. This movie, mostly I'm just looking for funny shit to say, but occasionally just sad thoughts pop in. And my sad thought for this scene was, I wonder how many people have died drinking wine and playing pretend instead of talking to their families. Oh, no <laughs> kidding. Like, here, wait. Let me get a little snack. I'll talk to my family in a second. <laughs> <laughs> but not in this fucking movie, because in this stupid fucking movie, the communion wine cures the Bible AIDS. The wine right. is the cure for whisper disease. Yes. And of course, on my notes, I have written, fuck this movie. Hey, uh -huh. also, we should point out Bruce dies. Oh, Bruce yeah, right dies before they <laughs> seconds before they discover a total cure for this disease. Yeah, which was antioxidants, apparently. Yeah, exactly. That, exactly. That That's Bible the way AIDS. to do it. <laughs> so all the book clubs on Long Island, they were fine. And also these yeah. people taking the communion. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go back to the uh, to the swan song of the president and the Antichrist. 
uh, where he has the most spectacularly, insanely stupid line that probably Lou just like, you know, they had to get him, like, you know, in, in, in the A team where they would always have to like drug Mr. T to get him to go on an airplane. I think they had to do something like that with Lou Gossett Jr. and just have somebody stand behind him holding his jaw and try to make him say this fucking line. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he says to the Antichrist, the only way to beat you is with Jesus. <laughs> Lou, we just need one take of it. Just get it out. Okay. I'm only doing it once. You guys ready? Yeah, we're ready. Go. Just one. The only way to beat you is Jesus. Oh, God. Last shot. Last shot. Close it down. That's speed. <laughs> we got a little room noise there. It's fine. There's a dog in the apocalypse. I don't give a shit. <laughs> now I'm not letting those words come out of my mouth again. Oh, shit. And then, of course, like um, this, he has, I don't remember what the clever line he has is right before the nuclear missile comes to explode and him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I love that the, that he's oriented the missile so that it comes in through the window they can see out of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would have completely <laughs> fucked his whole thing up if it had come from the other side. He was said, "Oh, well, I got you now. Look out your oh shit! Is are we facing east? Fuck! <laughs> oh, he's sure not going to see it now. Face. He's going to fuck the whole thing up. It's going <laughs> to blow up. Which, by the way, the Antichrist looks at the mus- missile like he's alarmed. But we are about to find out he's totally fine. He's still even wearing his suit. <laughs> Yes, yes, his bulletproof suit is also nuclear missile proof. Yeah. <laughs> when you come into men's warehouse, if you buy one of our suits and someone shoots in, I guarantee it. You like the way you look after the apocalypse. <laughs> oh, shit. And then, of course, we get uh, Kirk and he's calling um, Chloe and, you know, Chloe's all happy because she's okay. And, she, and he's like, well, what about Bruce? And she says, well, you know, he's he, he's black and the movie's over, so... No, of course, he's dead. Simply the best. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> right, but of course, the only two people, uh, or I'm sorry, well, I guess Chris died. I was about to say the only two people in the movie that die are the two black characters, but Chris dies too. Well, two, you said people, so that covers it. <laughs> right, I'm right, yeah. Pretty sure that Chris is half aardvark. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then we see the Antichrist wandering out of the nuclear fire because that's wandering what happens through an me. 80s music video. Just <laughs> burn, to burn, to burn. <laughs> I gotta say though, they Fire! nailed, absolutely nailed the CGI on that one though. I could have sworn that guy was really walking through fire at that moment. It looks so realistic. Someone was like, my daughter's just learning After Effects. Guys, can she do the last scene of the movie? Okay! <laughs> Why not? Star wipe to Jennifer, the Jennifer, you did so good. <laughs> So here we are at the end of three movies. The Antichrist is just fine, still controls the world. The raptured people are still dead. The good guys have accomplished nothing. The world is still bombing itself for the fuck of it. And there were never any boobs. So what the fuck was the point of this? Uh, these movies? Isn't a movie supposed to like present something and then resolve it at some point or something? No? It's overrated. Is that just me? Yeah, it's more, it, I think it's sort of like a new cinema thing. Sort of like, a, a, <laughs> like the boyhood Oh, God. It's an art film. Right. Yeah, this is an art yeah. film. It's like, you see Lost in Translation? There's a lot of that. Pull the yeah, lots of this. I got you. I got you. It's like, oh, what did Brill Murray whisper? What's the point of this movie? Who knows? It's about your experience. <laughs> oh, you know what? I got to say, dude, bringing that movie up just really made it hit home how horrible. Because I fucking love Lost in Translation. And now <laughs> my mind can't help but compare this movie to that one. It just moves way down the list. So if you were to compare this film in like Seventh Seal, what would you say? <laughs> The two have in common, they're both moving pictures, yep, and in different everything else. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lewis Gossett Jr., do you want me to close my face? What do you... I don't understand so, what's happening. Now, it occurs to me, though, as this movie ends, and we realize that nothing is resolved, that if you just assume, as we, I think, have been doing, that the Antichrist is the good guy, the entire trilogy makes sense. It's about... A pragmatic, anorexic version of Dolph Lundgren who realizes that he can <laughs> kill 140 million people to achieve world peace, and he does so despite the lackluster efforts of some newly converted religious zealots. I like that movie at that point. So. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I think it's a romantic comedy between Lou Gossett Jr. and the Antichrist, and we're just starting to see that romance heat up. I think that the first two movies are really just to sort of set the stage that the Antichrist is sort of this lonely guy who can't find love, who's <laughs> fallen before, he gets broken up with by Kirk, he gets broken up with by those two businessmen, he finally makes a connection with the president in this meeting, and in the following, there's 16 books, so in the following 
oh, right. 13 movies that they had planned. <laughs> it's really about them learning to trust and love again. And it's really – it's going to be great. That would be a better way to go with it, yeah. Something tells me I'm the Antichrist. <laughs> nah. So uh, here's my theory on this movie. I think it might have been an anti-vaxxer movie. They had a lot – like they were really confused about it, but in the end – you're not supposed to take vaccines. It's red wine. You just want to drink red wine, antioxidants, all organic, no, no one GMOs. In this movie had autism. Yeah, my aunt is very glad to hear the message of this movie. I'll tell you something. You know, you got it right. Left behind three. Because all you need is a glass. It's good for your heart. It's good for your heart. Not four bottles, Annie. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I look great for 50. You do. <laughs> But you're 43. Um, now, I also like – okay, so obviously with the Antichrist wandering out and, and, and all the major characters still being alive, you know, they were clearly trying to leave this open for another sequel. And obviously the franchise has already been rebooted. But I have a sneaking suspicion that we could talk Kirk into reprising this role – for a handful of fucking Arby's coupons. So I say we try to make Left Behind 4. We get Kirk on board. Uh, what do you guys think? What what happens in part four? What's our what's our what's our storyline? <laughs> it could be nothing because that worked in part three and yeah, two. they did they did that in two. So let's see. They he's already oppressed all the Christians and started World War three, mm -hmm. um, and he's immune to all weapons. Prayer doesn't work, and wine cures the diseases. So the main plot points of three are gone. I'm gonna say they make reservations for brunch. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> it's it's a nice definitely place. in keeping with the sort of the dynamic that this series yeah, has. Yeah, the going, first fifty yeah. pages of book three out of sixteen. I'm not perfect. saying yeah, that brunch. I don't want to go somewhere that doesn't have gluten, but like I feel <laughs> gluten sensitive lately. Like I know that I listen. I know that it's not like a huge thing, and I don't want to be one of those people. But I just want to go somewhere where I can avoid gluten. Everybody doesn't have to avoid gluten. <laughs> and Chloe's like, I love gluten. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that. The actress who plays Chloe, Honey Boo Boo is mom. <laughs> mom June. Who knew? Fun All fact. Right. So <laughs> in lieu of a uh, standardized rating system here, I ask you this. On the list of the least entertaining things that you've ever done on purpose, what comes immediately before <laughs> and immediately after watching Left Behind World at War? <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I guess this was better than the time I watched The Crying Game with my grandma. So it's better than that, but not quite as good as the second time I watched the crying game with my grandmother. <laughs> That's true. She was a hip lady. <laughs> Heath, why do we time. keep watching this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I said I wanted to watch the one about the pig in the city. Yeah, you're gonna like it. You're gonna like it this time. I thought you would get into it. So, no? I, I, I leaned in. I thought no, never. All right. No, all right. <laughs> okay. I, I felt I this moment. I misread, this, I, I, re, I misread the sign. I don't know. Miss, miss signals. <laughs> And Eli, what egregious thing would a person have to do to you before you would recommend this movie to them? I think that the, a person would have to like dress like me and get do a face off with me and then go around and like say mean things to my entire family. That person, if I got to avenge myself on them, I'd just be like, aha, now that I have you in my grasp, you're watching Left Behind 3. And they'd be <laughs> like, yeah, come on now. I just told your mother you never wanted to see her again. I'd be like, that's fair. That's yeah, fair. You're that's right. All right. No, yeah. That's a little extreme of me. I apologize. <laughs> Went a little old boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Left Behind World at War, but that isn't going to do it for the episode just yet. We still have to get you excited about next week, of course. So before we go, we're going to take a few minutes for a quick preview review. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Brother White. This is about a white <laughs> pastor going to a black church. I bet it's not going to be at all racially insensitive. I can't <laughs> wait. It looks – watch the trailer for this movie. This movie I, – I listen. There's nothing more racist than War Room. We topped out. We peeked out at War Room. <laughs> it's our own fault. However, what we didn't get in War Room, which is pretty fun and racist, is a white person reacting to black people because they're so silly. And that's what this <laughs> whole fucking movie is going to be. Apparently. And I love that it has Victoria Jackson in it. And also Reginald Vell Johnson. Fucking Carl Victoria Winslow. Jackson is like the bizarro Julia Sweeney. 
She also looks like she <laughs> swallowed Julia Sweeney before. Hey, Carl Winslow movie. in this movie, just from the trailer, already looks like a fucking Macy's Parade float of Carl Winslow. <laughs> yes! It doesn't look like Carl Winslow. <laughs> And so this is apparently the story of a white pastor that wants, or a white guy who wants to be a pastor so bad, but he just can't stand up correctly, so he gets fired from his, his other church, and then he has to go to some poor black church in the hood. Right. And one of the lines, in case you're wondering, in this trailer is, we live in the hood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is uttered by the daughter, and I want to point out, that I think this is very important, it's okay to want to fuck the daughter, she's 19 now. Okay, good. Oh, I'm, she, I'm she was wondering. only 15 I mean, when this movie was made, so if you look at her like, man, boy, when she's eight, she's already 18, it's okay. You're not oh, okay. Right. I wasn't really worried about when she turned. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not a big thing for me. I want, listen, I again, I'm going to put this out there because we had a fantastic, ver- Tyler did a fantastic version of sinking in the semen lattes guy. Oh, God, if someone so would funny. like to intercut moments from this trailer and the trailer to Training Day after she says we live in the hood, <laughs> I would love it. <laughs> King Kong ain't got nothing on me. We've got to get some celebrities. <laughs> So yeah, that would be great. As a matter of fact, I will include the link to the uh, to the trailer on the show notes for this episode, just in case anybody wants to get on that. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode six to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an extended edition of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed the show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail dot com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with his permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a guy from Brooklyn telling you to fuck yourself. Fuck you. Choosing your own direction means choosing how you spend your time. At Directions Credit Union, we help you manage your time and your money by giving you access to technology that works for you. Our online and mobile banking makes depositing and transferring money between accounts a breeze. Prefer real FaceTime? Our knowledgeable team is available to meet with you at any of our convenient branches. It's easy to choose your own direction. Become a member today at DirectionsCU.org. Directions Credit Union. We know you have options when it comes to keeping up with the high cost of health care. With Liberty Health Share, you'll join a community of people that will not only share in your beliefs, but also share your eligible medical expenses in your times of need. Liberty Health Share is not insurance. It's a Christian health care sharing ministry that provides you and your family with the support you desire. Liberty Health Share. Discover the power of sharing. Visit libertyhealthshare.org for more information.